happy Wednesday, everybody. This is Blaise Van Heck at Busy Bird Publishing. And I'm Les Germanis, also at Busy Bird Publishing. <laughs> so it's Wednesday morning and we like to, the sun's just gone in and the light's disappeared, so hopefully you can still see us. So on Wednesday mornings, we like to have a bit of a session to talk about books and writing. We usually try and feature a book Last week I was on a road trip so I had to do it from the car and I didn't have the books with me but we've got two books and I always pick really different ones to show how diverse the kind of topics are that you can talk about. So this is a book by Gerda Muller. I, ho I hope that's pronounced correctly. So The Seven F Figure Practice. So Gerda is a psychologist and she helps people to um, set up their practice and you know make better money from their practice and I think this is really important because a lot of people go into business because they're good at something but doesn't necessarily mean that they're good at business and that is quite often why businesses fail and so that's why a book like this is really helpful because it's specific to a type of business there are some fundamental things that are similar with every business but it's good to have something that is specifically to your industry. Same with, um, you know, how to, I have got a little book about how to publish a book. It shows you the steps to publishing. And if I was to write a book about how to run a publishing business, I would be very specific about, you know, how to make money from publishing because a lot of people lose a lot of money. Really? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that's Seven Figure Practice by Gerda Muller. And uh, that's a really handy one. <coughs> if you are <coughs> wanting to have a practice with some, uh, well, probably a few therapies would actually fit this too. Oh, and <laughs> I have Fat Bob and the Blonde by Heather Ward, Miss Heather Ward. Uh, she calls herself Miss H. Yep, and Heather is a bikey. I hope that's the right terminology. Uh, and she rode all over Australia. Uh, and I just read a little bit of the blurb. She says, be warned, I'm a little unorthodox. I may lead you astray, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You'll love a life behind bars, handlebars, that is. Together we'll rediscover passions, connect to gut instincts, break a few rules and throw responsibility to the wind. You'll hear some motivational toolbox preaching on being happy, not bartering with the time you think you have and taking off your grumpy pants. I'm big on that as life is short. So Heather... I just want to show some of the photos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Heather um, just really has written about her adventures. So it's a really interesting book from somebody who has more of a lateral view on life and takes life by the horns for the... Sorry, using a cliche. Um, <laughs> I actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I love... So Heather has this um, little bike that has a little trailer with it. That is really cool. That's something that I would love to do one day. Um, if anyone follows me on Facebook, I actually put a photo up of a three-wheel bike the other day. Did you see that on Facebook? Yes. <laughs> is there a bit of photo? This might be a bit of photo. There's lots of great colour photos in this one. So, you know, this is a memoir, obviously, about um, Heather's adventures. And Heather is the blonde, and Fat Bob is actually her bike. Yes. So that's the name of the bike, which is right there. <laughs> show and, this feels like show and tell. It is did show and tell. Do it, did you ever do show and tell at school? Yes. Yeah. And what sort of things did you show and tell? I remember once I um, told. I was in a car accident like that morning. Yes. When my brother was driving me to school and we got hit. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I got sideswiped. <laughs> And that was, was everyone, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, because the intersection is right by the school. So okay. all the kids were like, ran out and like I got out of the car. And, and had you were a hero. And had this little cut on my jumper where a piece of glass must have hit. And I went and told about it and it was like the highlight of my life. <laughs> okay. Almost. I wonder if they, I think they do still do show and tell. I'm sure they do. Yes. So last week, Les, I went on a road trip to Adelaide for Adelaide Writers Week. Okay. And last Wednesday, I talked about some of the things that I had that ha were recurring a lot with all the people I was were talking to, and one of those was about criticism. But the other thing that I was also realizing is how 
how hard people find it to actually get the work done. Yeah. You know, actually sit down and write. They're always complaining about, well, coming up with lots of excuses why they can't get them. Such done. as? Such as, I don't have time. What else? <laughs> Uh, I don't have money. What else? Um, I have a really good one, but my brain doesn't connect to my hands. Oh, that's... <laughs> uh, well, lots of excuses. Too much housework. The kids are a pain. Husband's a pain. Wife's a pain. Uh, all excuses, basically. Yep. What are your excuses? I don't have excuses. Because you pretty much write every day, don't you? Yep. I have, I have excuses. I should have been writing last night. But guess what I did? Patted the dog. I sat up, lay on the couch. Watch Mario at first sight. <laughs> Indeed, and it's oh a really God. bad show. No. I just felt like totally vegging out. That show actually makes me really angry. Because it's full of actors? It's just really even not even good acting. So, um, you know, years ago, I used to complain to you a lot about my novel that I had started a hundred years ago. It felt like a hundred years ago and I was about 20, I think I was about 20,000 words in. And so I asked you to be my coach, yep. and mentor, and you set me the task of writing 15 minutes a day. And I remember I started on the 1st of January, this is a few years ago now, and I aimed, I wanted to finish the book on the 30th of September and I, I, so I got, and I only did it in weekdays, not weekends. I got up earlier, about half an hour earlier. I'd have the dog and cat by the side of me, and I wrote 15 minutes. It usually actually ended up about 30 to 45 minutes. And I actually finished the novel on the 30th of September. Okay, that's really cool, but I know all that stuff. Yeah. So how did you find being bullied, uh, mentored by me? <laughs> it, it was tough because if I did slacken off, I knew I'd get yelled at. Surf get yelled at. But it's good to have someone make Sam, you how's your book going? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's good to have someone make you accountable, isn't yep. it? Because then you, um, when it's yourself, you can come up with all the excuses. Well, the other thing is, a lot of people who are writing it are inexperienced writers. Yep. So you run into stumbling blocks, and that's where somebody looking over your shoulder mm. is actually invaluable. Uh, I know one person who always used to just write for a bit and then fall away. Yeah. And talking to him, his problem was he actually thought it was going to be exciting the whole time. Yeah. And it was and going to be time, passionate. <laughs> You'll have ebbs and flows. Yeah. But you know, if, if he had someone mentoring him, he would just tell him, "Look, that's normal. You are going to have flat spots. You are yeah. going to feel like you want to veg out at times. You are going to feel." not up to writing or whatever. And that's when someone looking over your shoulder can talk to you and can also actually just say, yeah, take a time out or can actually just say to you, look, that's an excuse, sit down and write. Yep. And that's the really... Um, I think too, even at the beginning of an idea or a project, a lot of the times people are working on a book, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, and they have trouble harnessing their ideas and yep. they might go, okay, I've got an idea, but it ends up being five books. Yeah. I think having someone to help you harness those ideas and get some structure. Well, it's like start. in any form of life, if you are dealing or have someone more experienced than you helping you, yep. they can really help you visualize what you want and devise a constructive methodology to get you to where you need to go. Yep. Uh, probably with writing a book, it's a lot of words there. Yep. And a lot of time, a lot of hours writing yeah. them. <laughs> and people don't know how to get from there to there, mm. and it becomes this totally shapeless thing. And they go off on one tangent, and they go off elsewhere, and they stop, and then nine years later they pick it up again. They remember where they were up to, and again, that's where it helps to have someone with a bit more expertise just sit down with you and talk to you and say, "Well, this is the way we're going to look at it. Let's define what you're doing, and let's break it down." and um, uh, not comprise, uh, turn into some manageable steps that you can fulfill over the course of the week. Mm. So we at BusyBird have lots of pathways to getting the book written. Um, one of them is our book camp, which yep. is the end of next month. And so that's a two day um, intensive weekend where we go through the planning of the book, some, a bit of writing practice, and also talk about the marketing and the publishing. Yep. That, that is one way that people could do it if they only, you know, don't have much time um, and they can get a lot done in the weekend. We've also got our Bali retreat, 
in June, which is uh, almost a week, it's six days. And I think, I think you could get quite a good chunk of writing done in that six days. We've got lots of learning modules in there. I think we have 12 learning modules all together. Yeah. And we also have our 16 week write to publish program. Yeah, and people are signing up for that now because yeah. they're finding the value in having that structure around them and having someone, in this case yourself, uh, talk to them about what they want to do and helping them visualize it and break it down and giving them a structure. Yeah, and I think the beauty of um, the, that program, because you're, you're a book mentor as well, so you'll be part of this program, so people can choose either of us to be their mentor. The beauty of it is, if someone walked in today, we could start today. Yeah. Which yeah. Um, someone did actually yesterday, they came in and we said, okay, well let's start. She went, <laughs> and we actually did start. So, um, you know, there's no like, no, no, nothing like starting, you know, grabbing the bull. By the horns. <laughs> Is that our cliche for the day? Didn't I say something like that before? Uh, <laughs> it's just helpful too. I mean, you have mentoring. I know so many writers who start something and then just, I don't know, at some point, they just run out of steam. Yeah. And, and that's why, it's, you know, I was writing my novel forever and I got to 20,000 words and I just. I mean, you started in 1964, didn't you? <laughs> Not that old. But I think I started 68. about 20. Actually, I got the idea after the, the fires at the King Black Lake. Saturday. Yeah. So <clears throat> I must have started at about 2010. Um, you started a bit earlier than that. Did I? Yeah, you started much earlier than that. Because oh, okay. we met at school <laughs> in like 2007 and you were working on it then. I think a lot of book ideas percolate in people's heads for a long time, don't they? Yeah. <clears throat> and sometimes they think they're better ideas than, than they are. Or they need some help to actually, you know, get it around. Someone's gesturing to me <laughs> off screen. Have you got a question for us, Shell? Shell. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Do you, what would else would you say about kind of helping? And even, but even if you can't do one of these programs, I think the other thing too is sorry to talk over the top of you, but Shell's gesturing at me madly, <laughs> like it's just insane. It's uh, if you put her in front of the camera and she's shy, but she's jumping and gesticulating there. <laughs> And she's pointing at a guitar and saying she wants to sing. <laughs> just okay, just keep it for open mic, my shop. I think the other thing too with um, the mentoring is okay. I have three novels out. You have a children's book, a non-fiction book about publishing, and a memoir out. So that's quite a bit of experience mm. that you know we both have to share. And a lot of people who are just entering this industry or trying to write know nothing about anything and they're just winging it, which is fine because that's you know you learn by doing. Mm. But it can help to just have someone being there and guiding you. Mm. And a really good example of that is our Creative Fellowship. Yeah. You look at someone like Angus Watson who won that in 2016 and he was mentored over the following year. And he says that, you know, the amount of development he... Uh, for the experience over that next year and the, the improvement in yeah, his writing you yeah. know was just amazing and he never would have he, i'm sure he would have gotten there eventually but it, it helped to fast track his evolution as a writer yes. because he had someone with experience uh someone who was knowledgeable someone really good looking uh really talented really funny witty eloquent all those sort of things <laughs> just you know someone he could check in with periodically yeah. someone yeah. who could read some of his stuff someone he could sit down have a coffee with and Talk to and then and with Angus also there was times you'd you know message me and just say stuff. Oh, actually, it was me that charming, witty, eloquent, good-looking mentor. Uh, <laughs> but he he had someone he could check in with and say, look, I have a bit of a problem in terms of where my story is going. Uh, what do you think about this? And he had someone you could bounce ideas off. Uh, I think too, wherever you're looking for somewhere someone to mentor you, they have to have done what you want to do. Yeah. You know, there's there are a lot of people writing. You know, self-help books or books about how to run a business, but they actually don't have any experience. No. And so that's something you should look at. You know, when you're wanting to work with someone. Or conversely, been... you have those people who do have that experience, but then don't know how to articulate it. Yeah. And then Absolutely. they just produce waffle. Yeah. Uh, for the one of a better word. Yeah. So it's just really helpful. I mean, you look at it. We're really like Google Maps. You know, you can go somewhere across town, have no idea where you're going, and maybe you'll find your way one day. Or you can have Google Maps and look it up. 
and be guided to that destination. I like that analogy. So we're the Google Maps of book, book writing and publishing. I'm the Fabio of book publishing. Fabio. Yeah. <laughs> well, where's the, the hair? Oh, this, is, this is the 2000s. Come on, get out of the 80s. You've got to, you got to go. I'm too Please good looking me. to do that. Okay. All right, so that's our two cents worth today oh, in terms of No, 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 it's more than two cents because two cents now gets rounded down to nothing. So oh, five it's like cents. our four cents. Five. So it gets rounded up to five cents. <laughs> okay. So any, any parting words? Um, if you're going to write, write. Yeah. You know, and... That's always gonna, my number yeah. one tip. You know, <laughs> and if you're going to enter this industry, surround yourself with people who know what they're doing that can help you. Uh, you know, a lot of people just, as I said, they just wing it or they surround themselves with negative people, naysayers who really just kill their passion. Yeah. So yes. find like-minded people. Okay. Great. Thanks. See, See you next week.